Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, chads and virgins, and welcome to another episode of Turkey Tom Makes a Video Shitting on a YouTuber who shits on other YouTubers who shits on other YouTubers who makes videos about makeup and, uh, being gay, I guess. Hi sisters, James Charles here, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I like penis in my butt, blah blah blah. Cool. That's cool, you deserve $10,000 back! We have truly reached the peak of creative expression here on the Turkey Tom channel. Also watch my Sopranos video, nobody loves me. Is that like a personal attack or something? You bet, Buster. As far back as I could remember, I always wanted to be a commentator. Not really, because it's not that great of a thing to be, but we'll pretend I did for the sake of this parody, okay? Title card now. I've been in this community, or whatever you want to call it, for a long time, basically three years at this point, and while in terms of real world time I admit that's not very much, a lot can change in three years online. The entire landscape of the commentary genre has changed multiple times with various creators rising to prominence, falling, and then some rising again and others being left in the dust and really just fading into obscurity. It's been a while, I'm kind of an old man around these parts by now. Around a year and a half ago when I was just starting out and meeting new people and becoming known as a YouTuber and gaining a following, one of my least favorite channels was Kavos, a commentator who had around 500,000 subscribers at the time that he sort of came onto my radar for making a video about. He really became my first punching bag. I made multiple videos exclusively about him and referenced him in other videos frequently because I found talking about him interesting and I think I was pretty good at criticizing him, namely because his channel was far from perfect and had plenty of easy issues to pick on. Not to say that my channel was perfect by any means, honestly in terms of presentation at least, I would say that mine was uh, much, much worse. Mainly being that I used to somewhat respect his content, but now I absolutely despise it. Jesus. Calm the fuck down. There were people at the time calling me the hero the commentary community needs, but not the one it deserves. My videos about Kavos became some of my most popular at the time, and along with a bit of controversy that I got into with Keemstar, I managed to actually gain a foothold in the community. And looking back at those videos, like I said, they're just not very good. That being said, I think there's a lot that can be learned from Kavos and his rise to popularity that I'd like to talk about in today's video. Because for those of you who don't know much about his history in this community and his transition from one type of content to another, it's quite interesting and there's actually a lot that can be learned. This is a cautionary tale of sorts. This is the rise, fall, and decay of Kavos. Looking through the history of Kavos' channel, it's rather odd to see the amount of similarities between his channel and mine. He began making videos about other commentators and became known for it in his channel's infancy, much like I did. Granted, he was criticizing what most people would call the commentary establishment, and I was criticizing, well, uh, <clears> hmm. <throat> Him. Some of his first popular videos were about people like Nafuckers. Chop that fat cunt's head off. Wild Spartans. Isn't the only thing that is fit. I'm Alex. Definition of a mong. And Chubbs. Slow down, Tubby. The food's not going anywhere. People who were all pretty popular at the time. Looking at Kavos' channel today, most of his popular videos from around this time are still around, but his channel is noticeably sparse once again. This is actually because he's privated a significant amount of his videos, but by using the Wayback Machine, the titles and video lengths are still available. It's clear that in the beginning, he was still experimenting with types of content, uploading twice a week pretty consistently, from average run-of-the-mill commentary videos to parodying popular trends to hit pieces on popular commentators. It's kind of funny to see how the community reacted to his videos at the time, especially considering how the pillars of the community had risen to popularity for making videos about the scummy actions of YouTubers, criticizing the actions of popular commentators like Leafy. Despite this and their apparent knowledge of how to criticize those who cannot take criticism, they themselves became some of the worst proponents of not being able to take criticism. With Bionic Pig, Elvis the Alien, and Zaptai refusing to even mention him by name on an episode of Hot Wet Soup, which was the second most popular commentary podcast at the time. Keep in mind this is when Baited was still at its peak. Wild Spartans even made a video defending himself from Cabos. I am fat. During which he censored his face and only played extremely short clips in an effort to prevent him from gaining any notoriety of his own. Props for not stretching his videos. So you giving Jinx props for that means that you frown upon 
people who stretch their videos out for 10 minutes. He also made sure to respond to the weakest points, which were basically piss takes, and still managed to give the worst fucking responses possible. It's probably no coincidence that after Wooly1 pointed this out in his video about Wild Spartans, he completely switched his content type from commentary to reading off subreddits and pretending to laugh like a jackal. <laughs> then again, his views in those videos are slowly but surely declining as the trend loses steam, so I'd imagine he'll change to doing something even more vapid and devoid of talent pretty soon. Kavos became a sort of anti-hero in the commentary community in no time, and while he was by no means the most popular, or even close, he was pretty quickly gaining respect in the community and had become the talk of the town, getting into conflicts with other similarly sized commentators at the time like VWQ, as well as going on Tommy C's show to discuss the drama currently happening in the community. At this point, Kavos was sort of spearheading a new wave of the commentary community, a small sort of faction that was making videos that were a little less traditional and were brought together by their shared distaste for most of the popular commentators at the time. While there were and still are many of these channels, the most prominent ones at the time were Sapaz, The Random Shark, VWQ, and of course Kavos. Criticizing weaker links in the community like the long-forgotten Sinnoh and the aforementioned Wild Spartans became pretty commonplace on their channels, and their followings, while small, were pretty dedicated and they all received pretty good views for any channel, not even taking into account the pretty small sizes of their channels at the time. This community subculture of sorts managed to develop a shared audience and send fans to each other's channels, with Kavos giving a shout out to both Shark and Sapaz in a video of his where he responded to the commentary community as a whole. Sapaz and that random shark. Their links will be in the description. Check out their content. It is really good content. He even promoted a podcast in this video, which he was doing with Sapaz. However, the channel that hosted it has since been deleted, and I haven't been able to locate any re-uploads despite scouring YouTube search results and web archives. So I'd guess that it probably wasn't all that popular. So we know that these commentators were unsatisfied with the commentary community at the time, and we know that they banded together over this shared aggravation, which begs the question, why? Why were they so mad over the seemingly inoffensive content that everyone else enjoyed? Well, that comes down to a few main reasons that can be extracted from their videos. 1. Low quality content. Commentators at the time were seen as having extremely low quality videos, with minimal editing, boring personalities, and the bare minimum amount of work being put into them so that they could upload a video every day or every two days. 2. Self-deprecation. Many commentators and reaction style channels have been relying on self-deprecating humor for a long time, often making fun of themselves to avoid criticism. While it was popularized by people like H3H3, iDubs, Leafy, and Pyrocynical, all of the smaller guys decided to use it, but in a much less creative way to interject some menial form of comedy into their content. 3. Repetition. Many of these commentators would not only repeat themselves in one video, restating the same point over and over in order to stretch the length of the video to the 10 minute mark, but they would also repeat the opinions of their peers because each member of the community would often have the same exact opinion and not add very much in terms of their own thoughts to the video topic, even after it had already been said 10 times by other people. Anytime a controversy happened, everyone cranked out a video within a few days that was functionally the same and didn't add anything to the conversation. These three main arguments made for some pretty compelling points at the time, and they had certainly piqued my interest as this was when I began to make videos of my own, where I criticized some larger channels in the commentary genre. Now before we go any further, it's important to remember that Kavos didn't get this rapid growth to around 20,000 subscribers on his own. It's not to say that it was undeserved or anything like that, he certainly worked for it, but he definitely had some help along the way. At the same time that Kavos was starting to gain traction, Keemstar was on a warpath of his own against most of the community after being backstabbed by Leafy is here and Grade A under A, as well as having plenty of videos made on him by basically every channel under the sun, but most prominently Pyrocynical and the fuckers. This was nearly the end of the days when the YouTube community united under a banner to hate Keemstar, but he certainly wasn't about to forget about how many had treated him during those times. Keep in mind this is also when the Baited podcast was much more prominent and had become a bit of a hub for community drama to be discussed, with Keem often going on angry tirades about Grade, Leafy, and Pyro on the show, despite Colossal trying to intervene constantly and carry on with the podcast. According to Kavos, Keem had actually discovered him a few months earlier due to some gaming videos he was doing. This is likely why one of Kavos' earlier videos, and indeed the first video that is still public on his channel, is a video yeah, where he plays Call of Duty with Keemstar himself. Do something! <laughs> Bro, are you recording this? I'm recording all of it, man. You're recording right now? Everything. Like, no. <laughs> he knows. When Keem saw a smaller channel making videos about other commentators and going after those that he himself didn't like, he apparently saw a potential ally, someone who was supporting an extremely similar narrative to him, and could help turn audiences against people like I'm Alex, who he had certainly expressed his distaste for on multiple occasions. Dude, I can't stand this motherfucker. Like, he, his tongue is too big for his mouth. For the next year and a half, Keem would relentlessly promote Kavos on stream and in tweets, driving as much traffic as possible to his channel. He even let Pierce over here host an episode of Drama Alert, driving thousands of new people to his channel from the link, which of course was placed at the very top of the description. Hey, we have some great stories. 
and I hope you just enjoy the show regardless. People in the comments also expressed their support for his channel, and Kylos managed to amass over 50,000 subscribers, which isn't something to be scoffed at by any means. Funnily enough, around two years ago, he tweeted out a Photoshop picture of himself with this ever funny Batman quote. Kind of weird to see the number of parallels between my channel and his, even if they're somewhat anecdotal in the end, and probably don't mean that much. You have a fucking- is that a sock? Does he have a fucking Goodwill sock over his microphone? That's a sock! That's a legit sock over his microphone! That's a fucking cum sock! Around this time, Kavos was reaching a pretty pivotal point. He had pretty much always been making videos about non-commentators as well as commentators, like par for the course targets like Derv, Morgs, and Daddy05, and vloggers like Lance Stewart and Ricegum, who were pretty quickly becoming popular punching bags for people to take a swing at for some views. But it was clear that Kavo saw something coming over the horizon that would be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to grow his channel, and he definitely took it. In early 2017, a relatively unknown vlogger by the name of Jake Paul and his brother, Logan Paul, became the most relevant people in the YouTube community, a trend that would continue for the next year and a half and arguably is still going on to this day. Basically every channel under the sun, even channels who don't make videos about trending topics most of the time, couldn't help but at least include the Paul brothers in their videos. They were absolutely inescapable, with thousands of videos and podcasts being created about them each month and racking up hundreds of millions of views. At this point, Jake was public enemy number one and Logan was seen as the older, smarter brother. Which would change a year later when the suicide forest incident took place, but that's a story for another day. Jake was seen as a reckless, irresponsible vlogger who was disturbing his neighbors with his friends and had a complete disregard for others, and was just generally obnoxious, with all of his flexing and gloating, as well as the aforementioned rather terrible music video. And you, and you know I kick them out if they ain't with the crew. And while it's true that everyone was making videos about Jakey Boy over here, there are three main critics that really stick out in my head. PewDiePie, who had made a large number of videos about them, and many of which grew to be extremely popular from their release, H3H3, who closely followed both Pauls, especially Jake at the onset of Paul Mania, and of course, our main man, Kavos. I know some people say Kavos, or Kavos, I, I don't know, I say Kavos, fuck off. One day after Jake Paul uploaded his It's Every Day Bro music video, Kavos uploaded his first video about Jake Paul. Curiously enough, it takes nearly three minutes to get to the actual topic listed in the video title, which would be okay if it wasn't nearly half of the seven minute runtime. Stretching out videos, where have I seen that before? About a month and a half later, he uploaded his first in his This Video Will Make You Hate, insert popular YouTuber name here, series, which would quickly become the most popular series of videos on his channel, and one that he would keep coming back to, especially for the pause. These videos helped his channel grow pretty damn rapidly, sometimes racking up over 100,000 subscribers in a single week. Kavos became the Jake and Logan. Paul guy on YouTube, with him having 45 videos about the Paul brothers publicly available on his channel right now, and having accumulated over 50 million views about them alone, making up a third of his total channel views. Rape, 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 rape. The Paul brothers are the golden goose that kept on giving for him, having uploaded as many as five videos in a row where he discusses Jake, Logan, their dad, their girlfriends, and Team 10 as a whole. It's kind of fucking absurd that he has uploaded all of these videos about them, and honestly, I almost can't blame him for just doing what made him successful. Almost. You see, I, I used to actually like Cabos. Maybe not as a person, I can't say that because I've never known the guy personally. But his videos were definitely my cup of tea, and discovering his videos in my recommended was one of the most formative experiences of my YouTube career, honestly. At the time, I was watching a lot of commentary staples and had become increasingly disenfranchised with the genre as a whole. While it may surprise new and old viewers of this channel, there was a period of six months or so when I watched nearly every I'm Alex video that was uploaded. As hard as it may be to believe, considering the things that I've said about him in a myriad of videos. I was an unironic fan of the man, the myth, the legend, the used car salesman. I am Alex. But right around the time I was getting bored with the repetitive nature of his videos, Kavos came along and managed to garner an audience from saying what a large number of people were thinking, and he made genuine waves in the community. These kids were scared shitless of him. If they had simply taken some of his criticism to heart and been able to get past some of his somewhat personal tone, then they would probably be okay by now, but instead they decided to ignore his existence by sticking their head in the ground and pretending that nothing was wrong and then dropping a confusing and odd video six months after any drama had ended because you were still butthurt over old and dumb drama. Do unto others as you would wish they would do unto you is going to be the basic motto of today's video. But over time, Kavos became just what he hated. He set out on YouTube with the mission objective of pointing out the various hypocrisies and inconsistencies in the commentary community and illustrating how all these people were making terrible, 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 terrible content. Oh, this made me hard. His own videos weren't exactly spectacular from the beginning, 
They didn't have great editing, and they weren't particularly funny or interesting, but at least he was different. He didn't hold back with the insults, and he didn't use self-deprecating humor and act like a little bitch about everything. He was appealing because he tore people apart. He said it how it was. He made fun of their appearance, he called them names, and he managed to make genuine points about them along the way. In an ocean of boring, derivative shit, Kavos was an island of vulgarity, edginess, and harsh critique. It was refreshing and entertaining as hell, and witnessing all these big YouTubers cower in fear at a donkey lookalike with a lisp was funny as fuck. But that's all gone now. Now Kavos makes video after video about the same topic, and at least in my eyes, it's just as boring and uninteresting as all the people he used to criticize, if not more boring and uninteresting than them. Hell, even Keem sees it, and he's actually completely turned on Pierce in recent times. Kavos was like, the, the commentator killer. And it was awesome, it was good content, and I was sick of seeing I'm Alex just bullying this kid just because he had less subs than him. So I pushed Kavos hard, I promoted him like twice off a of drama alert, got him 100,000 subscribers. But after I promoted Kavos, he stopped making videos on commentators, content he was doing, he switched it up and went for the bigger names so he could get in the algorithm. While it's clear that Keem partially did this out of some fear of his market being taken over, and it's somewhat telling of his character that as soon as one of his friends threatens his success in a non-confrontational, natural evolution of his channel, he immediately backstabs them, I think it's still important to take into account what Danny here said about his content. But notice who's defending Kavos now. Notice who isn't afraid to say Kavos' name and defend him from the big bad Keemstar. Interesting how times have changed, isn't it? What you've actually done, what you've actually done, is I mean, you have shown that you are not a friend to any person ever. You are not a friend to anyone. You only it's long been a bit of a meme for people who dislike Kavos to mock him because of his rather large ego and the high regards he seems to always hold his content in. People have been doing it since this tweet, where multiple people took him completely literally and thought that he saw himself as the savior of the commentary community. And while I think he was being rather ironic, I think there's also some truth to that idea. Kavos used to be someone who would call out hypocrisy in the commentary community and the wrongs of people criticizing others, and ironically enough, he is now pretty much exactly what he hated. He frequently uses sensationalist clickbait titles and thumbnails with text saying things like, he gets mad and crazy, and has nothing to the conversation of any of the things he talks about. Basically just reiterating information he found on Twitter or Instagram and saying, X person is bad. He used to be the hot take guy, kind of like a Willie Mac, honestly. Now he makes videos about James Charles and Jake Paul at least once a month. Also, this Who series fucking sucks. I'm sorry, we all know I... Uh... Uh, I'm no fan of Keemstar, but even he does a better job of delivering the news. They say you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And I wouldn't say that Kavos is the villain by any means, and he probably never will be. But he's certainly a shadow of his former self. Hit me! Girls look better in a real tight sweater. 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 Girls look better. Do I look like a tasty treat? 